Hi folks, today I'm going to tell you about megarachne. Megarachne was a spider with a really serious identity problem. Megarachne lived in the Carboniferous period and um, I saw a replica of the fossil, the most amazing fossil from Argentina. You could see you could see sort of a head part more or less and and then a torso and and this um, you know, and, a, and, a, and the abdomen was very clear. It had these striations on it. And you could see little, like little sort of hair bases around it. So it was nice to imagine this huge tarantula-like thing with little hairs on it. Okay. And um, it had, I think, an eye here. And then you could clearly see on the fossil where some legs radiated out. And so, again, it was really nice to imagine these big hairy tarantula-like legs, okay? And this was considered at the time to be, you know, the largest spider that had ever been discovered, and it was also a very early spider. Oops. Okay, so basically you have this spider, and it was big. It was, I saw the fossil, it was like the, the, the body was at least this big, and then, you know, the, the legs spreading out from there. So you've got a really giant spider. And, of course, it was a lot of fun to imagine this character. I mean, just imagine if you were a little bug at the time, right? A terrified little bug running away from this huge thing. It was so big it probably could have eaten a lizard, or a small mammal or anything. No, I'm sorry, Carboniferous, there were no mammals. But there were definitely lizard-like little reptiles and fleeing for their life. Okay, so you just imagine it coming up over the horizon, this huge thing, you know, in the shadow. Uh, hmm. Multiple angry eyes. I don't know quite how you do that. Okay, we'll do one in the middle like that. And, you know, the big hairy legs. Anyway, so this was a great character, a lot of fun to imagine. There was one small problem, which is that it turned out not to be a spider at all. Um, I had included it in When Bugs Were Big, and I was so proud of it. And then the same scientists who discovered it, I think plus one other one, okay, there we have it, um, uh, shortly after When Bugs Were Big came out, and it was not long after I drew it, they essentially said, Oops, we made a mistake. It isn't a spider after all. And they decided that instead, that pretty much, yeah, I mean, there's the, the fossil is the fossil. It had, I think, two eyes there. And so, sure, there's the fossil with this thing that we thought was the abdomen, right? Well, that turns out to be a sort of little apron-like part of the thing protecting the abdomen of something called a eurypterid. Now, a eurypterid is a very cool scorpion relative that lived in the sea, and so it is distantly related to spiders because spiders and scorpions are related, but it was definitely not a spider. And it was, and plus, there are plenty of other eurypterids. I mean, it's not very cool to have a new species of eurypterid, but it was nothing very exciting. There's, it's neither the earliest eurypterid, it's not the biggest. There's huge eurypterids that are like six feet long, so this thing was puny for an, a eurypterid. And so here we are. But guess what? It still had to be called and is still called megarachne, which means huge, means big spider, right? I think it's, is it Greek, I think? Megarachne is big spider. But what happens is that in science, if you gave the name, whoever gave the first name, that's the name that sticks. So now this creature, which is not a spider, is still called megarachne. And I was very frustrated because I'd put it in my book as a spider. So what I did is, I was very lucky. It has a happy ending for me because now a new edition of the book has come out where the three books are in one, okay? And, and I was able to change some of the science. So here's the original page, okay? And you can see there's Megarachne, right? And compared to this kid and compared to a, another Eurypterid that we knew was a Eurypterid at the time, okay? I got to then draw a little, I drew, mega, I'm sorry, yes, megarachne, but now in the new form, I did a small drawing of the same size, and I put some of that sand-colored background, and so the designers were able to, to, the designer was able to put it right here in the scene, and I'm really glad, because now the book is up to date. So that's my story for today of the cautionary tale of scientists who change their mind, but 
I have to say, based on having done a much better study of the fossil. That's all for today, folks. Take care.